thank you guys all for coming here this morning. This is a um, really cool panel that we've curated. Um, it's actually like the second edition because when we did the tribute to Mary Pickford, the mother of Hollywood, which my film is uh, based on her life story, um, and it's coming out later this year. Uh, we actually, um, at the United Artists Theater, put together a really beautiful panel um, that was a collection of artists talking about the philosophy of United Artists in their own words, what it means for artists to unite, why art is the heartbeat of humanity, um, regardless of your respective medium, uh, what it really means to honor your voice and vision as an artist. And today we can uh, definitely speak to that in reference to this, to, to this current time that we're in, um, 2021. And um, so what I want to do first and foremost is go around and I'll kind of, I'll just call out the names and each person can say, who they are, what their art form is, um, if you wanna give any context to how we know each other or don't know each other, um, that's great. And then your, uh, in your words, what does it mean for artists to unite? So we'll start with Amit. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. And this um, is uh, just, you know, we're not live, this will be edited. And, and also just so you guys know, um, February 5th is the birthday, the 102nd birthday of the formation of United Artists, founded by Mary Pickford and Charlie Chaplin, um, Douglas Fairbanks and D.W. Griffith. And it was like the birth of independent cinema and honoring of creative integrity and independent artistry. And so the trades like variety and so forth, they, um, they, they do a piece on United Artists and this talk will be included in some features, um, some clips from this. So we get to be a part of that celebration, which is really exciting. So, and to you, Amit. <laughs> right. um, as my name's Amit, um, I actually know Jen. Uh, initially through work, I was a costume designer on one of her short films. And then we've collaborated on many, many, many projects and hopefully we'll continue to do that. Um, you know, for me, you know, art, my, what I, for me, my artistic endeavor is costume design. Um, I, I, that's what speaks to me when it comes to art, the way, you know, the way I want to express myself is through clothing. Um, to me, art obviously has every kind of form. It could be music, poetry, it could be filmmaking, photography. But what's beautiful about art is coming together is the fact that we can all collaborate. You know, we bring our own ideas and our own skills and our own expertise to a project where we can share those ideas, you know, where we put forth something that we want to present to the world and hopefully make a difference of some sort in the lives of as many people that we can. You know, it would be great to use our, our means or our tools to make certain kind of statements of where the world is and the world, where the world should be going. Um, you know, for me, costume design is the way. I mean, I've always looked at how people look at clothing. You know, we make judgments about people by what they wear. That is our initial, initial idea of what that person is about before they utter a word, before they say anything. For me, costume design use, incorporates that form in art of creating an image of a person before we get to, you know, see where they come from or what their mentality is about. Unfortunately, with that, you also end up dealing with stereotypes, you know, and that's part of the struggle with costume design because you are dealing with stereotypes when you're building on certain characters. Um, where I would like to use my, you know, to use that is to separate the stereotype from actually giving a person a voice of individuality. Um, that's where I want to show my art. That was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Lowen, you're next. Um, hi, hi. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I met, <clears throat> I'm here because first of all, my dear friend, Eugenia, that introduced me to Jennifer and we finally meet through Zoom. So thank you, Eugenia. We met uh, in LA, we have friends in common. She uh, 
gracefully came to my uh, book lounge. I was launching a children's book last year, not the year before, because we could still all get together. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> and she came with her uh, daughter. And uh, yeah, and we've been friends. And um, we met on an artistic level. And uh, she's been wonderful. Also, we we'll talk about collaborating. She's been really helping me into meeting, you know, artistic people. And uh, she's a very special person. <laughs> very, very, very. And I've met a lot of people. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to make it short. Um, I was a model. Um, and then I transitioned into acting. I did a few movies in America. Uh, lucky enough to to work with amazing people but i was always an artist like since i was a very very young age i think if i never became a um, a model i would have been a, just a painter an artist and i've been the, t the times down that i wasn't working uh, i was just painting creating constantly and for me uh, those times were probably the most important times of my life because there were moments that i had something to say according to what I was going through into my life. So I've been using different mediums. I do have a passion for animation and for Charlie Chaplin. Yay. Which is like, my God. <laughs> I played, I, no, I didn't play Charlie Chaplin. I played Buster Keaton uh, five years ago into a short film that was directed by James Franco in San Francisco. And uh, it was one of like my dream come true. I just wanted to be a silent film star and I didn't care, I wanted to play a guy. Uh, but yeah, I love silent films and animations and anything that has to do with creativity. And, and I've been doing many shows. I've done three shows in New York. Uh, my first was a collaboration with 50 artists in Brooklyn uh, called uh, Art uh, Meets Fashion. And, uh, and that was my first experience, you know, meeting so many other artists in the same space. It was mind blowing and so <laughs> inspiring for me to see other people of course I had my show and I had you know I didn't even know I could do a show at the time but what was the best it was meeting all these other artists who were coming from one booth to another and one was painting you know uh his family uh you know he was painting those big renaissance uh, drawings and then he was putting his friends into drawings and everybody <laughs> had something to say and I was so inspired because everybody had their own personal story because art is very personal, but it's also very universal because we all uh, are trying to express something. And, uh, and yeah, I, ca I, I cannot forget all those years in New York in Bushwick with all the <laughs> artists. You know, uh, we used to go to, um, uh, there was a huge building with different artists. One was making jewelry, one was making Renaissance painting, was, once was painting his grandparents. And I was just there completely submerged into this environment. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I create because I need to say something and uh, sometimes I don't create for a long time and then sometimes I do and it's, uh, it's very personal and, uh, and I hope it's also universal. My, my puppy's biting the, sorry. <laughs> oh, I hear her. Uh, she, uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if I said everything, but this is pretty much how, you know, I don't have one stigma, but I have a, f a need of expression that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, any sort of like attention. It's very personal. I always painted in the corner of my room when I was small and it was never to show it to anybody until, until I met a curator in New York who who said, be a part of this group. So my first experience as, as showing my work was actually a collaboration and a group, a group of artists. Um, I'm going to stop right here because I just can speak for another hour, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting, actually, because Scott Hayes plays Charlie Chaplin in my movie. And I met Scott because of James Franco, because oh, James okay. and I did um we directed plays for the same theater company at the same time in new york and we're like cross promoting each other's shows and scott was the lead in james's play the long shrift and i was directing julia styles in a play called phoenix which Amit um, was also the costume designer for um, so there's a lot of synchronicity there definitely um very cool that you've explored so many things and it sounds like art has been very healing for you as well like just yeah you know i was just i am i'm still but i was just not a child that could speak so much how i was feeling you know and i had a very chaotic childhood 
and I couldn't speak so much about what was going on. So I had to do something. And I, you know, I never smoked or did drugs, you know, so <laughs> I had to do something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that was my, uh, my, in French we say exitoire, which is an exit to feel that, you know, you can express something. And uh, it was always very important to me. It still is today, you know, it's something that is so strong in me, probably stronger than even the acting or, you know, it's just a different, it's like, I, it's a life or death sort of thing for me. Yes. Like I have to do this, you know? Yes. yes. I'm sure we all relate to that. Um, so Eugenia, you can be next. Okay. Um, hi everyone. Well, and thank you so much for the kind words and uh, want to say really inspired by everybody's work here in all their artistic endeavors and Excited to celebrate Mary Pickford. Jennifer, your work is incredible. And it's a very special birthday. I think she's just such an inspirational character, um, you know, for the arts. I think uh, it's really hard to label, like, what do you do as an artist, you know, because I think there's so many ways to express oneself. It's always interesting to grow. Um, I think this year, my biggest inspiration was comedy, definitely, because I felt there's so much chaos in the world and I felt comedy really, you know, united people in so many ways. And what was exciting that, you know, humans are so resilient, so we found a way to do shows no matter what, like even if we can't have that human connection, I think a lot of, you know, um, expressive arts like acting or they require that you know human connection but i felt even doing comedy or live shows on zoom uh that was a new way to you know to kind of connect and bring some laughter to the world so that was really exciting and also meeting all this international artists you know i think that time and location has been broken in that sense so we can unite no matter the place or time so that was very exciting you know i met a lot of artists from japan and australia who and we could collaborate in the moment and kind of bring new things you know and ideas to the world um and yeah i think i think human resilience is really inspiring i mean i grew up in foodlands in russia so it's really familiar what's happening now but i think in those times you really find incredible creativity you know those are the times that like bring new ideas and like inspire you to you know not only to be resilient but also like brings the beauty and you know the opposition of that um so I'm really excited to see what happens in 2021 I think there's a lot of changes in the air and it is definitely responsibility as an artist to you know to reflect that Absolutely, thank you. And in my Zoom gallery, um, Eugenia, Brion, and Jane are all in a row. We're actually doing a new project together. Um, actually, all of you will probably be involved if you're not. <laughs> if you're not yet, you will be involved. Um, we're on a mission with this new project, working titled uh, "Dark Beauty," um, about human transformation. Um, and Chelio has been involved with his art, and yeah. I think Amit's going to come do some costumes. I've talked to Loan and Exo about it. I think Ariane, you're the next one that's going to be suckered into this. Thing. <laughs> um, but that's a sidebar. So I'll let um, Brion go next. Hey, guys. All right. Uh, Brion Davis. I am an actor, director, and a transformational mentor. Um, I, most of my career has been acting and best known for El Abrazo de la Serpiente, which was the Colombian Oscar nominated film in 2016, which was a transformational shaman-esque experience that um, was led by a vision of mine in 2007. Um, and I play one of the, the scientists in that, in that film. So uh, that was an extraordinary experience. Um, and after that, I kind of went through a transformation myself and realized that directing and transformational mentorship was kind of where I really wanted to go. Um, there's a line in the movie where uh, the shaman is, is speaking to me and he, he puts a, 
makeup on my face and or ink on my face and he says you're Chicano and basically that's saying that I am taking the message now and I'm sharing it with my people and um, which is a pretty extraordinary film if you guys haven't seen it and you're all in transformational work it's it's phenomenal it's called Embrace of the Serpent or El Abrazo de la Serpiente um, so that kind of led me into looking uh, into transformational work. So I spent the last couple of years diving deep dive into that. And now, and how I met Jen was energetically through Instagram. <laughs> uh, she was living in New York. I had moved back from New York in 2011. And um, I think we met, what, four, has it been four years? Has it been that long? Somewhere between two, two and a half, three, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think energetically, we just connected and then you came to visit and we had an amazing lunch and it was pff, from that, yeah. that, that point forward, we were, we were hooked. Um, and I now direct more and I lead with vision and pretty much everything in my life. Um, it's really hard for me to live in the, the 3D. But uh, in order to, uh, and Jenna and I have had conversations around this, but uh, I love to live in vision. And when you live in vision, you bring in all these amazing collaborators, uh, artists. I have a, an appreciation for uh, Wagner and Ricard Wagner and, and primarily, and say what you will about, you know, everything, but <laughs> primarily because of his approach to theater and his approach to theater was always bring in all the elements you bring in music you bring in costumes you bring in acting you bring in story you bring in and what it does is it just elevates the consciousness of of the audience and then you hold a mirror up to the audience and whatever intention you want to set do I want to hold a mirror up to the audience and say this is you you can shift, you can transform, you can change if you acknowledge yourself in that process. You can be inspired. Um, as we saw yesterday, the artist that came on board elevated the, the poet laureate, the, the, the singers, the, you know, Gaga and Jennifer Lopez and then Katy Perry with the fireworks. If you guys haven't seen that, it's fucking amazing. Um, but, that's, but that's what artists do. And, and it's a collective, it's, it's a, uh, everybody's on this, quest uh, in a united vision that not one person can do alone. Um, so that for me is the importance of artistry. And we take a stand and look in history and you know that anywhere there's a transformation in culture or society, the artist was at the helm. There's an artist at the helm of that transformation, whether it be a writer like Tennessee Williams or Oscar Wilde. Um, and then, or a singer, um, uh, music can transform lives. And so that's how I appreciate art and story. And I did this laser treatment on my head so my <laughs> face is feeling. No, you, it, you can't tell, you look perfect. <laughs> um, but something you said makes me think about manifestation. And just even if you don't identify as an artist, the power of like everything you can touch and see having started as the unmanifest, the mug you're drinking from was an idea in someone's head or mind and then becomes a thing, you know? So we're all creators. And I think as artists, we get to also illuminate that for, for, for others, you know, who, who don't consider themselves artists per se, but mm -hmm. it's very it's beautiful. Um, okay, Jane, our youngest artist, Hello. Yes. Um, so I right now am focusing on singing and songwriting and I've been, this kind of been something I've been doing my whole life. Um, but in the earlier sort of half of my life, I really dedicated it to dance. Um, so I danced since I was four and then I stopped doing that around like age 12. And, um, and I had always been singing and writing music. Uh, and then I decided to fully pursue that in, I think, freshman year. And I, I currently go to a art school. Um, it's, it's a high school and it's called CS Arts. And that was, no, I think middle school was, but this was when I truly sort of experienced a 
unity of just so many different types of artists because it's it's an art school for everyone. There's um, there's creative writers, there's actors and dancers and visual artists. There's just so many, and you're just friends with all of them, which is really cool because it's so easy to kind of be drawn to your own little niche of people. But it's cool because it's it's an environment where so many people. Uh, you know, you have classes together and stuff, so you just make friends. And somebody could be a dancer and or like a, a creative writer and it's just really cool to hear about their experiences and what led them to that. So this is kind of reminding me of that, this unity of oh, so many different artists and um, ah, what else was there? And you're acting now. You've yeah, been I am acting now. I, uh, I had my first acting debut in Jennifer's um, Dark Beauty. So that was a lot of fun, actually. That kind of pushed me outside of my comfort zone a lot um, with one of the scenes. And so that was, that was crazy. Uh, I basically, I cried on camera and I don't like typically do that. It was very odd. Um, and so that was, that was very almost healing in a way, but it was also super like traumatizing in a way but I loved it it was all sorts of things and she said the next day you might be feeling a little like a little bit under the not under the weather but just like kind of out of it and I totally was the next day I was just like I was just so not myself even my dad was just like I need a break from you I was like okay fair <laughs> so, um yeah I think that's everything about me you transformed though and that is like mm -hmm. the power of art you know pushing yourself outside your comfort zone um something i've experienced too with even refugee kids that i'm doing a project with that yeah. are painting for the first time or doing things for the first time they get to start to see their um their stories kind of be palpable you know and you really tapped into your personal story in that scene it was really powerful thank you um Okay, Lina and Chelio. Hello. Hi. Buongiorno. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And, uh, nice uh, uh, group. Thank you, everybody. I'm an Italian artist, immigrant in America because. Me, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so beautiful. And then I meet uh, with Elena, I meet Jennifer, and then becoming this beautiful, why not choose love with humanizing the icon? And then, and then we have, uh, we try this nice project. And uh, so uh, uh, I am. Perception artist is uh, maybe strange things for some, but very easy to understand because I perceive the energy around. We, we, uh, we. Sorry, my English. I I had class of English, but now I'm trying <laughs> to myself. Or oh, everything is vibration. Everybody uh, emanate, um, emanate. emanate uh, vibration. A stones, inanimate things, have vibration. The life universe is vibration. I perceive this. I perceive the DNA of the person, the ambient is a gift. I discovered this like 20 years ago. And people say, Celio, what do you do it? In your draw, have something is property of this ambient. And then I stayed, I study this uh, gift and uh, uh, now is uh, evolved and uh, I share this uh, this gift with everybody and then um, I'm very I'm very glad to work with Jennifer because now now we have 35 uh, episodes about humanizing always uh, come uh, uh, a draw is a drawing is a part of the discussions always and then it's beautiful because 
is uh, a different view about the uh, the the persons there is like uh, a a, port, a, uh, a personal uh, 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 oh, sorry eh? it's, a, it's like uh, uh, a portrait from inside not outside the, an x-ray an x-ray yes <laughs> Yes, she helped me, and then so beautiful. I'm very excited. Always we meet uh, a new uh, artist, and so beautiful because becoming a community uh, uh, alone. Artist is alone. Artist, artist in the community is a part of bubble of energy, and then I'm, I am part of this with Lena, with Jennifer, with everybody, and then. I'm very thankful. Um, so I, I I hope you understand. Yes, we understand. Oh. And he works with a fountain pen. And actually, yes. one of his pieces is right behind him. It's it's so multi-dimensional and um, incredible. But and Lina, you are an artist as well. Yes, I am an actor. Uh, I actually met. Chelio on a on a film set. Um, I was a cop and he was visiting a friend on set that day and he started flirting with me when I'm trying to work, like waving and taking photos. And this is this is maybe not appropriate, but <laughs> but here we are, uh, over four years later, yes. four and a half years later. Yeah. Um, I uh, have, gosh, been an actor for over 20 years. I've done commercials and uh, independent films and uh, theater uh, plays. I've produced and directed plays. Uh, I uh, produce my own uh, films and now I'm starting to Put my creativity more into voiceover work and in writing. Uh, Chelio and I have been developing a couple projects that we uh, want to take a little bit further and see where they can go based on our relationship and, and uh, immigrants coming to America and um, cultural differences and communication and all of the challenges that that has we are completely opposite we're very very opposite <laughs> uh -huh. we learned a lot. We learned a lot living together in in the same apartment but um uh you know artists uniting to me is it's about the power of artistry it's about the power to lift us beyond what we know and beyond what we've perceived and and also to re remind us of these universal truths. Often we go to uh, films or we watch television shows that resonate with us in some way that remind us about who we are, um, or remind us about the quirks of humanity, um, the imperfections of humanity, um, but that we're often all trying to do the best that we can. Um, often we, we may fail but we did the best that we could and and that's all right yeah and often we succeed as well often we succeeded at things that we had no idea we could do because we never tried before and i think that's the power of, of artistry and the power of artists uniting is it shows us what could be mm -hmm. um has us continue to explore and challenge uh those restrictions that tell us, no, you can't, no, you shouldn't, you need to be this way, this is what's uh, normalized, this is what everyone else is doing. And I, I think organically, inherently, we know that that's not the truth. We know that there's more than that. Um, mm -hmm. And our artistry is a way to, you know, find a way to break through. Yeah, that's beautiful. 
Thank you so much. Um, Arianne, longtime friend. Hi. Friend yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll start with that. Yeah, we, Jen and I met, like, I want to say almost a decade ago, maybe at this point. I can't believe it's been that long, but we met at TIFF in Toronto um, about that, around that time on, um, on your other film and uh, we just stayed in touch ever since then. And then, so over the years, she um, would always, you know, um, invite me and sort of, you know, introduce me to these new projects that she was working on. And we really aligned on um, a lot of things spiritually um, and artistically. And so that's, I'm super grateful for that. Um, we've been in different cities together as well. And hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to do that one, once again soon. Um, and I can get out of the city <laughs> for a little bit. Um, but professionally, I work as a creative director. Um, and artistically, um, and even professionally and spiritually, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm interested and I've always been interested in the aspect of communication, um, whether that's visual communication or verbal or written or, or everything. And I really do think that aside from humans being makers and creators, which we are, for me, it's about the communication of that. How do we express ourselves and how do we really um, communicate who we feel that we are? And that can come across in a number of different ways. Um, everything from wardrobe, costume design to, um, you know, sound design, um, you know, the actors themselves. I sort of have an appreciation for every communication touch point um, in different projects. So in the last few years, I've been a lot more interested in the idea of directing and creating a narrative and really pushing that forward. Um, my favorite place to be ever is on set <laughs> because no matter what part, I don't care what part I'm doing. I don't care if I'm helping on production, direction, like styling. I, I just want to be on set, right? Because you just have the absolute best um, time and I consider myself to be so grateful if I'm able to work with other artists and we're sort of all working towards the same goal. I think that that's when the magic really, really happens. Um, and aside from that, I'm, I'm you know, sub-level to that, always been really interested in um, anything cosmic and our human connection to that. Um, and, you know, I, 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 it must be Carl Sagan that said, you know, where the universe contemplating itself right and we're all we're all we all come from the same place um biologically chemically all of that and spiritually you know i just kind of like this idea of us all trying to get back to whatever truth <laughs> we came from and for me anyway art is really an exploration of that we're, we're never definitively going to make any conclusions um, <laughs> through our art, but I think it's always a stepping stone forward in our human development um, in, different, in different ways. Um, and beyond that, I'm, I'm, you know, I've always been drawn to the visual. Um, I'm, I love photography. Um, and I think that it's still such a powerful medium, even though we're sort of in an age right now where there's more photos than there's ever been. And Jen and I have talked about this even with Mary Pickford, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of being this iconic movie star in those days compared to now, um, just in terms of how many more visual, um, you know, things we're used to seeing than before, right? So this idea of celebrity, I, I really love the idea of crafting identities and again it goes back to the idea of communicating who we are and for someone like Mary Pickford who you know sort of took on this new name had this persona um, and really became this visual icon um, across cultures mm -hmm. I find super fascinating the power that one tiny little woman can hold you know and I think that that's such a beautiful thing so that's why that particular um, project really resonated with me and um, why I think it's so interesting that there's so many I feel like there's been so many overlaps with this project and I like to think that that's that has to do with 
a bigger <laughs> picture <laughs> that we're trying to figure the, out. We're pulling the strings of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Wow, amazing. Um, Exodius. Yay. <laughs> well, um, I am Exodius. I am, uh, well, how oh. can I start? Um, as a little girl, I was always a very uh, outcast type of a, a being um, because I was always, a, you know, um, I'm, com I'm come from uh, the forest and um, so going to very little school and um, uh, I was always uh, wanted to cure people to get hurt, uh, coming with leaf, uh, licking the, the, the the bobo that they had and taking care of like you know people who, who was outcast also so it was like it's always been there the one to want to help the ones in in needs or um there's a that the eater in me was always you know so that was a uh, and art as art i always kept from uh, being young i always draw i always take uh, things where i find if I find things in the forest or I find things uh, on the floor, I create with them, make a bird or make a, if I need a makeup, I used to take rocks and put water on the rocks and the blue rocks was making blue and the red rocks was making uh, pink. So it was a way of life. And uh, I, so I was very connected to nature and uh, connected to nature makes us connected to spirit makes us connected to ourselves uh, in a way of a spiritual. And uh, so my mirror was very much into um, how life breathes around us, uh, is, is how it breathes within me. And I felt uh, the connection between all. Um, so um, making it a, a life of uh, harmonious, I always felt um, a, a a sponge like l'élan to um, to harmonize things in me and around me. So that's a forefront, I think, of, of, of my artistry is a lot to harmonize chaos. Um, Sometimes when I, 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 if I paint or if I do, you know, if I paint sometime, I will make a huge mess. Just put things, make a big chaos. And then I will realign it all to actually sustain and, and hold itself and to harmonize it. And uh, so, and also uh, as a being uh, connected to spirit like that, well, what I find is growing up, I, I, I could see that you, I could bring that energy of, 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 of just that energy, like a, when a child starts to play, uh, is not going to think, oh, how am I going to do this and start to think too much about the reason why we'll do such thing and the why, why, why. And the why often makes us stop. The, the, actually, the, the, the soul that's, that's like l'élan de l'âme la, is just stop. It's like, why should I do that? Why? And then it's, it's all stop. So I find that the child, which is very connected with the child in me, um, makes us like go. If you want to do uh, a roller skate, you don't think oh, I'm going to do this. You put the roller skate and you go, you know, mm -hmm. and you can fall, but it's okay too. It's part of learning to fall, you know. So it's like everything doing like this. Uh, so I develop uh, many, I would say, I, uh, many way of, of creating art and being art like i i'm probably my first piece of art which everybody is like that we are you know we're creating ourselves through different medium it seems like it's outside but it's actually inside you know that's coming out and uh so i uh, yeah i do i paint i draw i photograph uh, i sing i'm in a band with my beloved that was supposed to be here with me uh satya and um so we make music together and uh, I don't know, I make clothes. It's like everything, the same energy that comes for painting or for other things is the same energy. It's just a different 
at different forms. And um, so, yeah, I love to connect with people when we come together, the uniting together. Um, it's, uh, it's like when we say, uh, it's said uh, that when we come from um, maybe an evil or something very, uh, that wants to, to hurt ourselves, the thing is said like one when we have one heart uh it's going to be much more uh it's it's probably the 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 darker side that can make us hurt but if we are too hard then it it's 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 even just too hard more and one evil the the light the 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 heart wins so what it means it means the one, the, the two hearts will always protect the other and be aware of, 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 the, uh, of the other. It's like a growing thing. So when we come to heart and art and artists, it's a, it's a very uh, same, you know, it's an H in the front, but art and artists. So when we come many heart, we can really open portals so, so greater and bigger than just one. So we can really, really, um, and the heart of every one, because everyone is an artist, it just sometimes um, uh, is distracted from their heart. They might focus in things because society project, you need to be this, you need to do that. And artists are the one that actually, you know, explore that a spiritual connected to, to other 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 realms or other way of seeing they have their head sometimes out of 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 that you know um you know uh way of 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 of, of life of way of society or whatever and so when we when but but everyone i feel are artists when sometimes and actually i think this year being more inside uh being more like uh not being so distracted actually from uh what they usually used to do and spending more time with the children also which is a very good thing because children we have to be present and being present is 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 really where it's happening mm -hmm. <laughs> present is it's our goal it's our true 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 self it's it's our embodiment of the self there's nothing outside there that can make us more happy more complete than that presence of self and children uh, bring us always to that presence, presence. So if we can all connect to that heart inside, that child inside, uh, we can all be present together and create and open the portals. And yeah, they can absolutely be um, that, that uh, evolution that we are looking for in a major commune, uh, commune way. So, uh, and uh, Jen and, uh, and us and me and Satya, we met uh, in 2017 and uh, we actually did that, we played. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did play, we made music and we, uh, we made music and we, uh, yeah, we did uh, paintings and so many things. And so yeah, going back to that chat with and, and play. <laughs> wow. And that's that, yeah. I cannot stay for long, but I managed to just like take a quick, quick break. Hello, everyone. So happy to see you guys. Oh my God, seeing beautiful faces. <laughs> wow. Tell us what, hello, hello. Tell, tell us what <laughs> artist uniting means to you, Satya, as our closer now. Oh, wow. Okay, what a, what a timing. <laughs> so uh, artist uniting, what does it mean to me? Wow. Um, you know what? As an artist, we really like, uh, go into our inner world and we basically like, express in the outer world and what's cool about artists uniting is you have everybody's like in a world just communicating and connecting to one another so it's like having this symbolic communication symbolic discuss discussions and uh, it's not just like a rational intellectual communication but we're just like sort of connecting with stuff that really intimate with us you know, if I take, for example, like uh, I can take Ahmed, for example, let's say he's designing this costume, you know, for example, well, there's a whole inner process with that. And, you know, let's say see, seeing that costume that just links with your vision of, let's say, Mary Pickford and us 
how we translate that with the sound that we added into the into the to the film you just have like inner world just just builds up and it's the same essence but with different talent but we're just like having that same essence and you have that essence just finding like different uh medium of expression but it's like that same essence so artists uniting to me it's like our inner worlds and process just getting together and then the message becomes clearer in the outer world yeah wow, you just made me just like literally crystallize like this the the senses we've been gifted as like the human senses yeah hearing and touching yeah and absolutely like we are like painting our world you know just by literally being exactly um, and paying attention you know just for and, that one integrated experience different senses exactly and, what and when you, you have those go just those conversation i'm yes. sorry 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 no sorry. go ahead go ahead no, please. i was just thinking about children and just like what a gift we can give them just by teaching them presence like to to continue to stay in their experience absolutely yeah. not to yeah the thing is that children yeah. we always i think the thing with children is that we tell them like don't do this don't do that it's not acceptable in this society uh and then and sort of you you know when people say um you know i, I i'm not an artist um and the thing we, a lot of us like to say well everybody's in a way is an artist yeah. it's just that you know it's just that some of us just you know stay connected to that sense of ourselves, and we and we just roll with it and i don't i don't even think that we get any any props for uh working more for on our art because i think in a way that we couldn't not you know we couldn't adapt to just just being like okay straight up just intellectual like i couldn't do it any other way <laughs> yeah. i had to i had to keep it alive it's just there's no props it's like i had to there was no other way <laughs> Lowen, Lowen, what were you gonna say i'm excited uh yeah th uh, thank you so much uh for your explanation of the united artists i love it um exodus is it c'est ton prénom oui, is that your exodus. Exodus. Oui. beautiful i um, love what you said and um i you know about the, what you said about the children's and i you know for me when i'm painting it's the only place where i have zero thoughts mm. I don't think like it's like you know I had more issues into doing other things artistically uh, than paint like painting for me it's like my mind just completely goes blank wow and I have zero fears but I have no fears mm. like anything that I do for me is very organic right now I'm working on new pieces of papers and origami I'm doing some sort of construction before that I was doing you know water colors and then children's book and then I did mixed media but I had no fear to go from one to another because I know the essence is very personal, but as you said, it is universal because I know we're all trying to say something. But the place where I create in, in the paint, I know it's exactly what a child is, like, because I have no thoughts, mm. I feel good, I'm happy, I'm not, I'm not scared that I'm going to fail because I do, as you say, I do make mistakes or like I drop uh, some paint, just go on it and I'm like, Oh, I like that. It never goes <laughs> like, oh my God, it's like, I've fucked it up. Sorry, I just cursed. Fine. It's fine. I messed it up and I'm like, oh my God. And then Don't I'm do like, this too. Yeah, oh yeah. So straight away, it becomes, uh, it becomes, it's fun. I love it. I'm like, oh my God, it's even better now. There's not a time that I'm like, oh my God, this is, I messed it up. So uh, thank you for um, sharing that uh, feeling because it's uh it's the best feeling to have i don't have it anywhere else than when i do that i wish i could have it all the time but yeah it's uh i really relate to it so thank you for sharing that mm. for me that that um it also has to do with instincts you know like the lack of fear it's like when you can immerse yourself in your art and it's just this like natural flow you're just trusting your instincts and they're just coming out and i think kids do that too they're not, like they're like you said they're in the present moment they're not questioning anything necessarily and you know I feel like as soon as you start valuing those instincts is when for me anyway you start feeling light right There's, it's like transforming your your feeling of your place in the world and even your feeling in that present moment and I feel like there's also probably a, an aspect of empathy throughout artwork right and sort of like this communication communicating how we are absorbing energies and how we're feeding that back into it mm -hmm. so 
the childlike sort of, um, you know, standpoint I think is super important and it, it it's sort of it's almost as if like it's certain parts parts of your life it's harder to remember that and then it seems like you know even some of my friends or my mother who went back to painting later on in life um, she sort of made her work back to that whereas in the middle of her life she got flustered with other you know life and apparently other things that matter more than art but eventually you go back to that place I think Wow. i to speak to that. I don't know if you're moving on to something else, Jen, but I'd love to No, speak. this is like, we can be free form and just, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, it, this is all bringing me back to a conversation that I had with my dad. And my, my dad was amazing. He was, he passed away at the age of 59. He was my best friend. He was a great mentor. He, he was also early on in my parents' relationship, pretty dogmatic about religion. He, he was handsome, 6'4". The whole world, the whole rule book, the whole Bible was made up to serve him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so there was a, you know, he, he battled, you know, not only me coming out, but he also battled, you know, kind of like that was the first big, oh, I need to look inward. And then there was the whole uh, cancer and he, he battled that, but that was another part of looking inward. <clears throat> and for the first time in his life, he had to experience spirituality on a, on a level that wasn't just black and white text, right? Um, and he asked me, and this is one of my favorite conversations. It was within the, the, the year or two years before he passed away. And he said, what do you think the Holy Spirit is? So I come from a Christian background and I kind of created my own philosophy when I was being raised to, to, to make sense of it. Um, and I said, well, the Holy Spirit, do you want to know what do you want to know what I feel or do you want to want me to tell you what you want to hear? <laughs> and he said, I want to know what you feel. And he said, and I said, you know, the Holy spirit is, is if we're made in God's image, if we're created to then therefore we create for, for creation. Right. And that's our purpose. And I agree. I think every single person is built to be a creator is built to uh, and constructed to create. Um, and the Holy spirit is that, messaging that works through you to 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 create that and i feel it no other place than on on live stage or on a film set because you're constantly working in that intuition you're constantly working into that 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 impulse and and downloading those messages um so that we can create and be powerful in that way um so it was a really beautiful moment that i shared with my dad and he said i agree with you <laughs> yeah and and i think that when we acknowledge and and the difficult part is when you know we're we're in that framework of this these are the rules made up by some man person these are the rules and these are the guidelines to stick inside of well our job is to to break those and see what else is possible so always living in possibility and 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 moving in okay here's an obstacle, what else is possible? As opposed to that obstacle freezing you. Or, um, seeing, or seeing the obstacle as a portal. Yes. Switch it on its head. I like, I like, I started this mantra of like resistance is an invitation, you know, like. The only way out is through. Is through. Mm -hmm. The clear water is, you gotta go through the muddy water to get to the clear water. You can't go around the muddy water. I'm not saying that out of yourself. But how many of the obstacles are created by our mind? That's the other issue. Oh, you know? put them there first. Every exactly. I mean, the idea which Exodia said to me, which is great about the present, I mean, I think half of our struggle is the fact that we live in the past and worry about the future. You know, and if we did let go of that, the only thing that we can control is the present, you know? Um, and I mean, the rest is stifling, you know? I mean, I think the best art comes out when we do live in the moment, you know, where there is, we're free from every thought about what the possibilities of what could happen or what happened, you know, and we just create. And that's about living in the moment, mm -hmm. you know? The, the mind, the, the mind, um, so busy is the mind. The so many, many, many stories and everything about on useless. So many useless <laughs> thoughts. Yes. And um, when when we when we have the 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 practice and 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 the I will call it leisure and luxury to actually oh, leave the mind to his own story as far 
as we can so we cannot hear or see too much of it then uh, the, that's the spirit can 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 because we made the spirit and body and soul so then we can be inhabited by our complete self it doesn't come holy spirit and spirit doesn't come it doesn't have space if we think too much the no. mind takes the whole place so we cannot come and we cannot collaborate because the collaboration with spirit is a, it's healthy it's 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 we made of that uh, everything that lives is made of that so when we have the 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 chance we take the chance and honor our incarnation we we and we leave that busy crazy uh, you know mind of stories a lot of useless stories uh, go more and more away far away from uh, from ourselves from our mind wow yo life lives <laughs> through us there you go <laughs> so, there you, yeah. um i know everyone's like on a schedule i don't know if does anyone else this is amazing we could go on and on and on um Amit, do you feel complete? Did you want to say something else? Are you? No, I mean, I agree with what Exodia is. I mean, to me, thoughts are sometimes what's, you know, what suffocates us, our own thoughts, our inner dialogue, you know? And I think to get in touch with, the, you, you cannot rationalize spirituality, you know? We can't analyze it. We can't, it's not a mind thought process. It's just a question of being, you know? Um, yeah, you have to separate your mind from the reality of spirituality in a way. You know and the mind is a tool you know yes. it's, it's it's here to serve us we're not here to serve it so it's exactly. how to like integrate it into the creative process in a in a healthy yeah. way <laughs> um, <laughs> balance balance yeah balance. the key <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean this to me is the power of artists coming together it's shared values shared energy high level it's it raises the vibration. Um, we did it and we can carry it into our day. Um, I'm so grateful. Thank you guys for coming together. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything, uh, but we get to all go do our art now and I'll go <laughs> discuss collaborations and things. Eugenia. The art, the art of life. Yes. <laughs> lately, I'm everything we do. <laughs> lately, Exodius, I'm into the elevating the mundane, finding the beauty mm. in the mundane. I feel like 2020 was definitely a year um, to find beauty in the everyday things, mm -hmm. like doing the dishes. I have this newfound appreciation for doing the dishes. Yeah, have to get done. I wrote a poem about it last week, yeah. guys. I mean, <laughs> everything's divine, right? Yeah. I mean, Everything the material, is <laughs> material world is is still is creation. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Presence can be brought into all those tasks. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. Cleaning, cleaning is actually probably the most holiest thing to do. Is cleaning. So when we are cleaning our room or set, it's cleaning inside of us. Cleaning it's our really body. It, everything. It, we clean our room, oh, we feel cleaner even inside. We clean our earth and, and this go, goes beyond, you know? And it's, uh, uh, it's, it's part of self-care and self-love and all this emanation of well-being. And you know, when we go, uh, as it say, when we go to the the, the the realm of of god you know we go there clean that's why we sublimate our heart so we can go in the in the home of of god which is our self within our heart but it's always that you know that process of cleaning sublimating our, our heart our self and <laughs> the dishes are part of it and everything around us <laughs> daily rituals ritualistic purification um <laughs> eugenia are you good yeah, I mean, I, I love listening to everything that everybody said and, you know, a t little note, like talking about the mind, you know, I always think, like when you approach the script, I, I try to cut out all the words because I'm like, do you really need to say that? Because that's the mind, right? Like, just being present is so important. So just to add to that, you know, I think it's like listening and being there. I think it's yes, so powerful. Yeah um jane any last words from you 
Um, no, not really. <laughs> I thought this was this was super eye opening for me. This is my first experience doing this, so I just think I found um, I really enjoyed like listening and just kind of being on the side, just seeing all of the experience that everybody has had in their lives and just kind of getting a perspective that I haven't um, fully like experienced yet because I'm so young and <laughs> it's excited. Are you saying we're old? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Very old. And if anyone wants to share their Instagram, Jane uh, has a YouTube channel, right? right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, you tell them what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead. I'll type it in the you chat. You can say it too. So we oh, can. it's just um, it's just Jane Powers. Jane Powers. Yeah. And then um, our show is humanizing the icon, which some of you have been on. It's a YouTube channel too. Um, and yeah, anything anyone wants to share, like we should all stay in touch. Well, you can connect with Dove Raven on Instagram. Raven. We got a lunch or album this spring. So it's going to be a lot of uh, really funky music, old school hip hop and retro glitch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Dove Raven. Chelio Bourdain for his art. Um, it's amazing. Chelioboardine.com. Uh, also, he's on Instagram, Chelio underscore Bourdain. I'm on Instagram too, when I underscore Carter. Thank you. And well, and your art's on Instagram. Right? I've seen. Me? Are you talking? Yeah. Yeah, I have my, my main page and I have my art page where you completely see only the art, which is probably cleaner looking. You can dive in easier than the other page. Uh, but yeah, you can. Is it, you, is, it, is it on your name? That I... That's on the Zoom. I'm going to put it on the chat. If everybody can put also their website on the chat, so it's easier for everybody to remember. Okay, okay. and I'm going to stop the recording. Um, we can stay on, but everyone say goodbye on the recording. Bye. 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 Ciao. Beautiful people. Ciao. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.